What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and uh, it is raining here in Cape Coral for a change. And I got my beautiful male Boland's Python here. It doesn't get much darker than that. What a beauty. This guy, Pablo can attest, this guy's got the greatest personality. I've had him around my shoulder probably for about an hour now, and he's just chilling. He loves coming out. He just wants to hang out. Look at that beautiful black iridescence. This guy is just exquisite. And it's funny because when they're born, they're like reddish looking. And when they go through that ontogenetic color change, they turn black. Hey, there he is. I'm still looking for a female. A couple people did reach out to me. Prices are very high, and I understand that, but uh, I'm going to keep looking. I prefer to do a trade, so I don't have to pay as much, but, you know, I would like to find him a girl and eventually breed this guy at some point. But right now, I'm just kind of enjoying him, and he's a real fun snake. And talking about dark snakes, a lot of people have been asking about how to identify an IMG scoria boa. Sounds easy, right? IMG, increasing melanistic gene. As they get older, the state gets darker. Well, scorias all express that IMG gene very, very differently. So I'm going to show you a scoria without IMG. I'm going to show you some scorias that have IMG and, and the complete opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of how they express that gene. I'm also going to show you some other cool boas, so stay tuned. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, I have a beautiful scoria female here. This female has uh, produced some babies for me in the past. She potentially could be rabbit. She looks big. Look at those stretched scales. She's still eating, though, which kind of always weirds me out whenever they still eat. I'm always like, well, maybe they're not pregnant. She eats voraciously, too. But scorias are very, they're good eaters anyway. Um, she only ate a small rat, like, this week. And look at how big she is. So I, I, I do think that she's gravid. Uh, I think she's going to make some babies. But what I really want to show you is, if you look at her, look how light she is. There is some dark areas there, and this is not a hyposcoria, this is a regular scoria. There's really no dark pigment stuff spots in her. This was a little darker when she was younger, but as she's gotten older, they've actually lightened up, which is important because we're gonna be talking about what IMG does to scoria. And I'm gonna show you in a little bit that when some scorias that have the IMG gene in them, these darker areas will get really black, but the rest of the body stays clean. And then in other scorias that are IMG, the whole body turns black, or at least all this area that seems to be a clean area becomes dark. And that's what makes scoria so amazing. You never can predict what you're gonna get. This was the first scoria I ever had. She's had one litter for me so far, and she produced some amazing babies that actually might even breed this year. I'm still waiting to see if they produce, but you can see those stretch scales. Look at that. Those stretch scales usually indicate babies in there, so I don't wanna upset her too much. Uh, she did want to come out. I was going to film her in a cage, but she came out on her own and just kind of wrapped around me. And she's a really nice snake, and she's got a great personality. And, you know, a lot of people, once again, think scorias have all this neurological issues. And, you know, there probably are some out there that do, but you can see this snake has got no neurological problems whatsoever. She's always been perfect for me, and she's just a, a tremendous, tremendous snake. Great breeder, great eater, and uh, great mama. So we're going to see. But let's go take a look at these IMG scorias and see what IMG gene does to the scoria. Here's a beautiful IMG scoria boa. Just shed. I had to just show him to you. I've shown him to you before plenty of times. I just love him because he's just shed. He's like got like pinker. The black's got blacker. But his whole body is not covered with, with black pigmentation like you would think in, a, in an IMG. But this, he just keeps getting dark. The blacks keep getting darker and darker on him. But he's not getting black throughout his body. Now I'm going to show you another scoria that I have. A female that is an IMG and she's got black all over her. You won't believe it. But he just keeps getting darker. The dark pigments keep getting darker and darker. That's what I've noticed. Every little pigment spot gets blacker every time he sheds. Really cool. But I told you, scories are weird. They just are just different. <laughs> Their pattern is different. Everything about them is different. They, they respond differently. Uh, that's why no two ever look the same. Let's look at the other girl. All right, now here is another scoria female. This is an IMG scoria. Look at this girl. Look at how dark she got. It's unbelievable. I mean, she's got black throughout her body. It's so weird how the difference is between these two. I have another scoria that looks even different, but this girl has gotten really, really saturated with, with black pigment throughout her whole body. Take her up, and I have a feeling she's gonna snap at me a little bit, but maybe not. She might just be being a little defensive. 
Go ahead and get her up here. She's got some decent size now, too. Let's get her out here. Look at this girl. Look at that darkness throughout her body. She's unbelievable, right? Doesn't even look like a scoria. I've never seen an IMG scoria get this dark. I've seen Motley you know, IMG scorias get dark, but this girl has got no Motley in her. She's just very black. Look at that tail. Crazy, right? I'm telling you, IMG scorias are the way to go if you want diversity and difference. They're all completely different. Look at that tail. Look how cool that tail is. It's like one of the coolest tails I've seen. Looks like a panda bear tail. Look at that. Here's a beautiful red dragon female that has been putting on some nice eyes. She just shed. She's got some beautiful, beautiful coloring. Look at that spot of eyes. Beautiful red saturation. She's getting a lot more whites throughout her body as she's getting older. Look at that. Look how beautiful she is. She really put some nice eyes on lately. I'm really pretty happy. If you remember when I got her, she was so little. And she's put some good size on her. You know, we're not even feeding her a lot. We're just giving her like, I think she just started small rats just recently. And look at the, look at the saturation in the head. The head is really what makes it. The head and the eye, beautiful. This is a call albino blood. This is hypo. I think this might be a sun dragon. This might be a hypo in here as well. I never really was confident in that, but she looked she looks like she, she does have some hypo in her, for sure. Look at this beautiful female that I've been growing up. She just looks, she just, you, she's phenotypically normal. She should be, at least. She's a triple head, however. She's head for albino, head for blood, and head for leopard. But she just does not look normal. That's for sure. And we know that head leopard does change pattern, but there's no hypo gene in here or anything like that. So it's kind of weird that she's so different looking. Look at that girl. Beautiful. Beautiful pattern here. She put some good size on too. Once again, these are the snakes you just kind of keep in your rack and you just say, okay, I got them in my rack. One day they'll breed. You hear Pablo in the back packing up snakes. We're packing them. Filming as we're taking a look at some of the snakes and pulling out stuff that's going to new customers. All right, this girl's not being too happy, so we have to be careful. But she's an IMG that's increasing melanistic gene, VPIT positive, and says so it's, it's it's a T positive line, so it removes some melanin. But this thing is is looking wacky looking as it's getting darker, as it's getting older. It'll never turn black. It'll stay like that brown color, but it's getting like black on the outside. It's like almost, ooh. She got me. She got me. She got the phone. She didn't want to, she doesn't want to be filmed. Look at those eyes. Look at those crazy eyes. That's a, that's a cool snake. Look at that. Beautiful head pattern. Look at that. It's like someone painted this thing. Beautiful, like reddish brown eye. Look at that tail. I'm really happy with this. I sold my male hole back that looked like this, but sorry, right. I kept the female. All right, as we're packing snakes here, I'm filming like a maniac because I'm just loving everything I'm seeing here. And this is not going anywhere though. This is a jungle fire, head VPIT positive. So this female will go into the breeding program, probably this coming fall, hopefully. She's looking great. Look at that little heart on her head. Isn't that cool? And once again, fire and VPIT positive go great together. Jungle always makes everything better. So I haven't even decided what I'm gonna breed her to. I might breed her to a, a, an IMG hypo head VPIT positive. That's a possibility of what's gonna happen. I have a better male, but he, I don't think he's gonna be ready for the fall. So we gotta wait, but she's ready. All right, since we're showing big snakes and we're cleaning, here's my sun glow. Actually, this is an albino sterling female. Sterling being the patternless boa. There's no, nothing. It's just a straight, basically slight striping on the side, but no saddles whatsoever. 
This is an albino version. Beautiful girl. I gave her the year off. She she produced a nice litter. I still actually have some babies up for sale. I don't even know if we have my morph market. We got I got to check that up. up. But she uh, took the year off. She's up to size. She'll definitely probably be in the breeding rotation this coming year. And look how beautiful she is. Look at that. Look at those beautiful reds in her. She's a gorgeous looking. I'm so happy we can take her outside right now, and it's so overcast. It's a good good light in her. But she's got some nice size in her. She is. These sterlings, I'm telling you, are voracious eaters, and they are, they get big. I, I really underfed her, and I, I was surprised she actually produced a litter because she was kind of on the small side. Now, all of a sudden, she has hit a growth spurt, and she's just gotten really super thick, and but that's all the sterlings are like that. Sometimes they're a little aggressive, the sterlings. These, these actually, the ones I've been producing seem to be really, really mellow. Uh, she's really a sweetheart too. Sometimes she, she doesn't like Pablo very much though, right? Pablo, you've gotten it a few times by her. <laughs> she loves me though. <laughs> I wish the new steak we got loved me so much, uh, Pablo. Right. One, that had the PIT positive. We got to show that one too. But beautiful little girl. I hope you're enjoying all the snakes here that we're showing you as we're cleaning because who doesn't like a big snake, right? All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas on this beautiful Friday going into Saturday. I hope you guys have a great weekend planned for you. And, uh, you know, I got a bunch of stuff uh, we're going to probably do this weekend, especially in the snake room. We've been moving around a lot of stuff, setting up new enclosures. I will show you that next week. We got some new stuff coming. And to give you a little hint, I was on the phone with Kevin McCurley of Nerd. Uh, yesterday, last night actually, and I, I bought some cool stuff from him. And you'll uh, have to wait till, I guess, next week or whenever I receive that to find out what it is. We also had a good talk. I talked to Brian Bartrick too uh, today, and I'll probably be going to Animal Con, which is going to be at the end of August. So I'll be one of the panel speakers. Brian called and invited me, and that was very nice of him. I've known Brian for six years, seven years now. And, uh, you know, I don't care what anyone says about him, I, I, I think Brian's a great guy. He's great for our industry. I really think that he loves his animals and really wants to help promote reptile keeping in the most positive way. So uh, thank you, Brian. And I'll definitely show up, JR, just to, you know, to see you and to uh, show support for our fellow Floridians here, uh, what we're dealing with with uh, U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife. And that's going to be another whole video I'm going to do on that because we all have to rally the troops, sign the petitions, and really show our solidarity in that, in that sense. Also, I wanted to uh, say, you know, uh, someone p posted a, um, Boa Kings posted a picture of a granite boa. The granite boa came out, I think, about five or six, so maybe seven years ago now. Uh, someone had had this new morph. Supposedly, they were being sold in the White Plains Reptile Show, from what I hear, for like 40, 50 grand. I don't know if anyone actually bought them. The genetics were never revealed. There was an albino version. There was couple other morph versions of them. I don't know what happened to them. I'd love the person to be who is breeding them now to contact me because these things are awesome. I'll put up some pictures and they're really cool. I don't know whatever happened to them though. Matter of fact, the one that was just now that I see this granite boa, the one that uh, the boa recently that was found inside a box in Brazil looks very, very much like this one with the white bottom and the uh, granity looking top. I just, I love when new stuff just kind of creeps out. But I don't know what happened. This this was around seven years ago and no one's heard anything. I, I, don't, I haven't heard anyone report anything. I haven't seen anything on Instagram or Facebook. So either they all died or the guy just uh, disappeared or I don't know. Hopefully, if you're watching this out there, if anyone uh, knows anyone who knows anything about these granite boas, please get in touch with me. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video with all the hodgepodge of stuff we did, plus the IMG and how it affects the scoria boa. Really, really cool, huh? I love anything that you, that's unpredictable. I'm all about chaos. <laughs> I like chaos theory where you just don't know what's going to happen when uh, when a gene is introduced. So, if you like getting into if you like getting into the IMG uh, scoria business or boa, I guess breeding project, you can contact me. I have a bunch available still on Morph Market, and uh, I can hook you up. As a matter of fact, someone contacted me. I'm going to be doing a trade with someone. Uh, I'm not going to say who it is unless they want me to reveal that. But for now. Uh, we're running out of time, so weekend's coming. I gotta get uh, cracking. I hope you guys have, once again, a uh, beautiful weekend plan for yourself. Uh, if you do, if you like what you see in here, please hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, hit that like button.